Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Sector for Nerds. I'm Ryan Brower, and today I'm here to talk with you guys about Star Wars The Bad Batch Episode 6, Decommissioned. Yes, I know I'm a few days late. I'm recording this on a Saturday, and this will probably be going up on Sunday. Uh, if you guys don't know, I just moved into a new apartment on Friday. My first ever apartment, actually. So I'm very excited about it, but also a lot of moving stuff into the place, and it's just, it's been a crazy couple days, and I've had work on top of it. So I, I thank you guys for sticking around, sticking with me. Thank you guys so much for your patience, because trust me, it means the world to me. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If this is your first time watching, I like to do a lot of uh, reactions to fan-made Star Wars content, such as tribute videos and fan films. I also like to do a lot of discussion videos on the latest episodes that appear on Disney Plus when it comes to Star Wars and Marvel. We've done it with shows such as The Mandalorian, Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7, WandaVision, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and we're currently doing it right now with Bad Batch. And also, we've got Loki coming up as well uh, next week. So make sure, for all you Marvel fans, you guys stay tuned for the Loki show uh, as well, because we're going to be doing discussion videos about that. This is going to be the first time, I think, that we have two shows going on simultaneously at once that we're going to be able to do discussions on. And I'm glad they're on separate days as well, so that way I don't have to post two videos per day. So that, trust me, is going to make things so much easier on my part. And hopefully you guys are here for the ride, because exciting times are coming. And exciting times we are in because when it comes to the Bad Batch, I am absolutely loving this show. To me, there has not been one bad episode of this show yet. I've loved each and every one of them, and this one was no different. And you know what? I'm sure the internet is loving this episode as well. Now, I have not seen the internet reaction, but you know what? I mean, come on. How can the internet be upset when this episode brought back two of the Clone Wars' most popular characters, and that being Trace and Rafa? People aren't going to be upset about that, right? Alright guys, so when it comes to Trace and Rafa, we're going to get into it and we're going to have some great discussions about them. If you guys actually want to get to that discussion point now, I'll leave some timestamps in the description below. But I do want to cover some things before we get to the Trace and Rafa stuff. Like I want to talk about some other parts of the episode first. But if there's certain discussion points that you would like to see maybe more than others, then just go into the description and click on the timestamps of the uh, topics that interest you the most. I liked Echo training Omega at the beginning of the episode. They're still on Ord Mantel by the way, which I was kind of surprised by. I would have thought we would have seen them in their ship, kind of like we have at the start of every episode. But you know what? It's okay. Uh, make Change it up a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. Omega was struggling to use her bowcaster. Though I did find it curious, though. I'm like, okay, but she can use a blaster in the first episode, but a bowcaster, she can't. Uh, like, I guess maybe, you know, the fact that you have to pull back and do a little more aiming. You know, it did seem like she was kind of str scrambling with the blaster in the first episode. You know, it's okay. I can, I can look past it. So, Sid is sending them to Corellia, which when I heard that, I'm like, wait a second, are we gonna get Han Solo and possibly Kira in this episode? I, that was my first, like, initial reaction. I'm like, okay, Corellia, like, that's obviously the planet that we see at the beginning of Solo, where we see both Han and Kira, so I'm like, oh, maybe we're gonna get something here, I'm not sure. So, another thing I wanna discuss real quick before we get into the Corellia stuff is that these guys keep mentioning Crosshair. He's mentioned in almost every episode in some capacity. However, However, we haven't seen Crosshair since the third episode, which I think is fine because I think you want the attention to be on the Bad Batch, which is I think what Dave probably had in mind as well, is that the, the focus of the show isn't supposed to be on just Crosshair, but the Bad Batch as a whole. And technically, Crosshair isn't even a part of the Bad Batch right now, you know what I'm saying? So I, I completely understand it, and I think we're going to get our fill of, of Crosshair later, and hopefully, maybe if we can even get him to join the crew again, I mean, that would be great if we can somehow I'll remove the, the chip from him. Let's talk about Corellia and everything that went down there, right? So they get to Corellia and they go to this factory because they're trying to steal a tactical droid head. Uh, because I think that I think they were gonna give it to Sid. I can't remember because it's been I watched the episode like early Friday morning, like when it was released at 2 a.m. my time. So I'm trying to remember back. I think they were gonna give it to Sid, but I'm not a hundred percent certain on that. All right, whatever. At the end of the day, they were gonna steal it, and then someone else steals it, and then then someone else comes running up to Omega to try and take her out, but Omega's like, no, I ain't having none of that, and the person takes off the helmet, and it's freaking Rafa, and I'm like, oh shit, and then I'm like, wait a second, does that make the other person trace that? Are we getting Trace and Rafa back? And sure enough, 
We did! The Martez sisters have made their Bad Batch debut. Honestly, I thought it was pretty cool, and I know that I may be in the minority, as a lot of people on social media, judging just based on what happened with Clone Wars Season 7, are not gonna like the fact that Trace and Rafa were here. Honestly, you guys, I don't have a problem that much with the characters. I mean, Rafa I wasn't necessarily, like, the biggest fan of, and sure, Trace made some bad decisions too, but that's just, like, who their characters are. It's actually kinda cool to see the Bad Batch interacting with all these different characters. Like, we've seen them interact with Saw, with Fennec, with uh, Bib Fortuna a little bit. Now we've got Trace and Rafa as well. I like that because I, I like the idea of characters that we haven't necessarily seen on screen before with each other, interacting with each other, and what they, you know, do to, you know, like, whether they work together, or like, how they feel about one another. I like that stuff, stuff like that. And it's cool because the Bad Batch and Trace and Rafa, basically those two arcs consist of like two-thirds of the final season of Clone Wars. So to see them kind of come together for the first time and have this interaction, I thought it was pretty cool. Now again, you guys are going to have to let me know in the comments what you guys thought about this episode because while I did like it, I know that I'm, I'm sure there are going to be plenty of people that didn't like it. Take my brother for an example. He is not a fan of Trace and Rafa and honestly, he's not even that big of an Omega fan either. So he just, he did not like this episode at all. Whereas me personally, where like I I mean, Omega is one of my favorite characters in this show. Uh, for me, I just, I thought it was great. And I like Omega's involvement in this show. I, the character really has grown on me. As far as Trace and Rafa, it's like, they're not my favorites, but I don't hate them either. I, like I said, I thought it was genuinely cool to see them come back. There was a lot of action in this episode too, because it was like the Bad Batch versus Trace and Rafa versus the security droids that were maintaining the building. The Bad Batch would kind of work together with Trace and Rafa, but also, like, try to work against them because they're both after the droid head. There's a moment where Trace is chasing after Omega, who's got the droid head, and Omega's gonna, like, fall into this pit of just lava or whatever it is that's melting all the, the droid parts or metal, whatever, and then Trace kind of goes like, okay, you know what, it's, it's wrong to leave this little girl die, so I'm just gonna go and save her, which is good, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like Trace is just like, no, screw you, so, yeah, that's always good to know. And we kind of know, based off of Clone Wars, that Trace is someone who likes to help people. I mean, she helped Ahsoka, you know what I'm saying? If it was Rafa, she probably could have cared less in the moment. And then my man Wrecker once again hits his head, and I'm like, Wrecker, stop hitting your head on things. This can't, you can't keep doing this, man. And then he starts saying the words that we've all been fearing him to say, those four magic words, good soldiers follow orders. And I'm like, no! He didn't, I don't, th I think he just said good soldiers, and then like in his head he could hear Crosshair saying good soldiers follow orders. So I don't know. I don't like this though. I don't like that Wrecker is like making this slow turn to the dark side. I don't like this. I don't want, I, like they need to find Rex and get the chips out of their freaking heads so we don't gotta worry about this anymore. Like for crying out loud. I thought the joke about Echo was funny. I thought that Wrecker coming in the end and just wreaking havoc on all those droids was cool, and then for them to activate the battle droids and for them to attack the security droids. Like, there were, by the way, there were a ton of security droids for this one building. I don't know, I kind of found that weird, but, you know, it, it is what it is. But yeah, having battle droids come back was pretty cool. So I can't remember at which part this happened, but the droid head ends up getting destroyed. But before it did, uh, Tech was able to, like, extract information from it, and at the end of the episode, they give it to Trace and Rafa for them to go and give it to whoever it is they're going to give it to because they'd said before that they've been working with someone who wants to make a difference in the galaxy. So I'm like, oh, okay, who could they be uh, referring to here? Like, I was thinking maybe like Ahsoka, uh, but we'll kind of get into it more in a second because first up, they go in the ship and and there's R7. And R7 was Ahsoka's droid that we see it like towards the start of Clone Wars in her first mission on Ryloth. But we also see R7 get shot and taking a bullet for Ahsoka in the Siege of Mandalore arc in that final episode. So I feel like that means that whoever Trace and Rafa are working for has some connection with Ahsoka because why else would R7 be there and why would he be uh, built? Now, there was a weird moment 
moment though. So you see R7 and it looks like R7, but the next shot they show of him, like it does not look like R7. I almost wonder if that was like a graphics department mistake or something, or whoever was doing the artwork for that made like a small mistake because it did not look like R7 in the next shot. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. At the end of the episode, Rafa makes a transmission to whoever, like they don't show the person, they just kind of show like a small portion of like I think his arm or like his waist or something like that. They, you don't see much of the person, uh, little to none actually. And she says, we found some clones. We think you might be interested. So um, get, here's my guess, guys, for who Trace and Rafa are working with. I think it's either Ahsoka or it's Bail Organa. And I think how it could work with Bail is the fact that I, I don't know where we're at in the timeline, but in the Ahsoka novel, she does find Bail, like not long after Order 66. Like she spends the most of the time throughout the book, like surviving, doing things on her own. But towards the final third of the book, she ends up meeting Bail Organa. And then they kind of establish a relationship there. And that's where she comes up with the idea for Fulcrum and whatnot. So it is possible that Ahsoka or that Bale is, you know, the one communicating with Trace and Rafa, but it's via Ahsoka's decision. Like maybe uh, Bale asked Ahsoka, like, hey, do you know anybody that could be helpful for our cause? And Ahsoka could have been like, you know, oh, I know two people on the underworld of Coruscant that could help us. But regardless, whether it's Bale or whether it's Ahsoka, I think there is an Ahsoka tie in there because otherwise, why else would they have our seven? So that's another thing that we got to take into, into consideration as well. But you guys, I am very excited about this series going forward. I've loved every single episode of this show. I know there's still people that are down on it and people upset by the fact that they think that a lot of these episodes are filler and not much is going on. And I mean, I honestly, you guys, I don't understand it. I th I'm almost wondering, you guys, if we've gotten to a point where people are just looking for instant gratification when it comes to these things. Because Clone Wars and Rebels, I feel like we're exactly like this show where there were a lot of it was it was a new adventure every week especially with rebels i feel like rebels and bad batch there's a lot of connections and the same with mandalorian as well where each week was a new adventure so i don't understand what people are looking for un unless they're just looking for episodes like twin sons or twilight of the apprentice every week but that can't always be the case it's like I said a couple weeks ago, people just want to go from one big story to the next, and I, I don't think that storytelling should ever be done that way. I, the reason why I think these advent, new adventures every week work so well is because you become invested in the characters, and for me personally, I become more invested in these characters every week. I'm entertained by what I'm seeing on screen. I love seeing the new, like, the character returns, or I guess Bad Batch debuts, I guess, uh, in, in the show. Like, being able to see Saw Gerrera, very cool. Getting Fennec Shan for a week, that was pretty cool. Getting Trace and Rafa, thought it was pretty cool. So I don't understand how you can't like this show. Just remember, guys, Luke Skywalker didn't go from a farm boy to a Jedi Knight right away. That took three movies of build for that to happen. But I digress, you guys. I absolutely love this show. Let me know what you guys are thinking of the show as well in the comments below. Uh, what you guys think might happen in the remaining episodes episodes that we've got. I think we still got a ton of episodes yet in this season, which I'm very excited about. This is going to, I think, carry us through the majority of the summer. So guys, I am very excited to continue to give you guys my thoughts on each and every episode of The Bad Batch. Make sure you guys are subscribing though and stay in tune to my channel so you can get my thoughts on each and every episode of The Bad Batch. And we got it coming up with Loki as well. So lots to look forward to here. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share this video around as it really helps support the channel. And I will see you guys next time. This is the way. This is the way.